For close to a hundred years, there's been a brass band in the West Yorkshire village of Hayd Edge. It's a tradition handed down by one generation to the next. And today, after years of sweat and slog, the band have finally made it all the way up. Now they're competing against the big boys of the championship section, the best bands in Britain, hoping for glory and playing for the love of it. Simon and Heather Wood have brought their two kids up to the sound of brass, and not surprisingly, the passion's really rubbed off. When your dad's musical director of Hayd Edge and your mum runs the junior band, music becomes a hobby and a way of life. It's a happy coincidence that we play things that work together. Uh, Having, been, having a brass quartet that works, it's just, it's just luck, really. Aaron just wanted to play a cornet, and Noah wanted to play a tuba. But his idea of the biggest thing he could carry when he was five was that euphonium. So uh, it's a happy coincidence that we've got a nice, balanced sound to make a quartet. We, re we really enjoyed playing together. It's been good. The venue in Barkisland near Elland. The band are joining forces with the male voice choir and providing the entertainment for a fundraising concert. It's to raise money for Masonic charities and we have a what they call a past masters fund, which is run by the provincial grand master. And the money goes to that, and then it's distributed to non-Masonic organisations like the Scouts, the band myself, at the £2,800 last year to buy all new uniforms for the juniors. Um, Home for Scouts got um, £1,000 earlier on this year. Hospices get money all the time. It's going to be a big show, with an audience full of the great and the good. In our area, it's probably the biggest deal we do. Do another one in October with the junior and senior band, but it's not just as stressful as this. And Simon's not helping the stress levels either. There's a big finale to the show and he's decided to try something new. Pyrotechnics. <laughs> We've never ventured into this world before, but we thought it might be a good time to do it. Just some, uh, some fireworks to go with the 1812 overture. The only difficulty is I'm just worried about we're a bit close to the choir. But, you know, <laughs> they, they can move, can't they? They might have to. The concert's going to be a smart do, best bib and tucker, but round here they really know how to enjoy themselves. They'll be providing good solid Yorkshire grub with no airs and graces. Meat and potato pie, mushy peas, and then sort of non-food stuff for the vegetarians, you know, like cheese and onion <laughs> pie or something. The band's benefactor is Edgar Dickinson. He made his fortune with Longley Farm Dairy, but Edgar believes in giving something back. He's a local hero, recently awarded an MBE for all his charity work. You know, I haven't been on holiday for about seven years now, and I, I was just thinking today, it does me more good going up to listen to the junior band on a Friday night and listen to those kids. It does me more good and more satisfying than going to sit on the beach in Spain. It's smashing. You know, it really does me good. Things are running late and the band's still rigging their equipment. Well, all the equipment they managed to bring. You are kidding. Why have we not got half that stuff? No idea. What do you mean, no idea? Simon's not idea. happy. I'm sure the snake stands in one of those long, the long bags over all the equipment. Well, how come there's no Swanee Whistle? Swanee Whistle or not, as every trooper knows, the show must go on. from the very first note, Aid Edge are a runaway success. Without the stress of a contest, the band can really relax into a concert performance. And the do's a great success too. An audience of 200 sink 23 square feet of pie, 
20 pounds of mushy peas and a gallon of mint sauce. And in return, they raised six and a half thousand pounds for charity. It's a big year for the band's chairman, Peter Badham. He's celebrating 50 years of brass banding, clocking up more than half of that with Hayd Edge. It's time for the band to say thank you. Peter's been in the band 30 years, and have I been president 30 years? Uh, George, not, not so far off of you. But uh, you've been the chairman of the band, you've been the father of the band, and you've done a stalwart job, uh, Peter. But probably uh, no one else here knows, but Simon, besides being a, a terrific musician, is also an artist. And this, but, this, but this, this the right wheel. <laughs> that's more than half of you. You don't know which way up. No, it goes sideways, does it? Is that right? <laughs> Well, is it, Simon? Slow. Slow. <laughs> uh, yes, it's, it is. It's, it's slow and well. <clears throat> um, and I think it's fantastic. Yeah. If I were on for another 50, I wouldn't be able to give back what Breath Band has given me. So thank you all very much. Thanks, Simon. I, I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> thank you all. Another Hate Edge veteran is Herbert Greaves. <laughs> Herbert's in his 80s now, and it's a long time since he played with the band, but they remember each other with great fondness. Banding was everything to him, and for years Herbert panted up the steep hill to Hate Edge to put on the uniform and line up with his mates. In those days, you played in a band because your father did, and every rehearsal was a family reunion. Father, brother, father's cousin, and an uncle. It was the same music, but a different world. Well, we're talking now about, say, 1930, 32. He used to travel on bicycles, and it's, it's uh, quite steep uh, from Home Bridge to Haydage, so it was, it was walking most of the time. Uh, and uh, coming back, it was all right, because you'd be back in five minutes from Haydage to Home Firth. And we used to have straps fastened to our instruments, uh, and they, we had them on our back. Uh, so uh, that was the way we conveyed our instruments uh, uh, to the band practice at Hayd Edge. I've always found it that uh, playing in a band it's a great leveller. Because you have a, a dustman on one side and a, and a bank manager on the other side, so it's, it's always been a great leveller. That's the thing about a band, it, you get together and, and it, it's, it's a great thing to be in. A great thing to be in. 
and down the road at Bird's Edge, that's what the kids of the training band are finding too. Well, welcome to uh, the training band of Bird's Edge. Welcome to their first ever concert. So uh, I'm sure they're all excited. I know I'm excited. <laughs> anyway, we're going to start off with one of our favourite pieces. This is Bob the Builder. For Simon, it's a welcome escape from the pressure of rehearsing with the senior band. The Yorkshire Area Regional Championships are just around the corner. Thank you. That went well, didn't it? <laughs> I think we'll call it a day there. <laughs> time that I enjoy the most uh, of banding is um, uh, are the weeks before a contest where you start with uh, sort of a blank canvas if you want uh, of, of music um, and, and you, you play it through for the first time and you think oh, we're never going to play this or I'm never going to play my part or whatever but um, you practice and you together. practice One, and you two, practice three, four. One, and um, ah. eventually it comes, and those weeks before, as as you feel every practice you go to, the the, the music improving. This sounds like a different band. This is good. It's only days to the Yorkshire Regional Championships. Don't all disappear there. It's probably the most important contest in the band's history. I think, in a way, we're quite lucky in that our first crack at the championship section, it could have been technically more difficult, but it's Wagner and it's, um, it's a hard blow. So, it's stamina. I played in a youth band, but I came in, into brass banding when I was 16, so it's taken me... Yeah, I say 34 years to get into the championship section. It's my first crack at championship playing, so yeah, I really do want to do well. I think it's huge for the band. I mean, over the years, we've gradually come up from the second section. And now we're going for the championship section, which, you know, is really big in Yorkshire with the competing against the best bands in the world. I've been um, having two hour rehearsals twice a week for about two or three months now, so lots of hard work. And then it's also physically tiring as well because um, finishing at 10 o'clock, obviously, and then you've got to wake up again for school in the morning and things like that. It's obviously, you know, a long day. The sound is huge. That's quite often one of the biggest differences. We've got a, a, an awful lot of young players who have literally physically still developing and still producing, uh, still learning to produce notes big and in tune and things like that. So it is the biggest blow of your life. It's a, and it, it's it's every bit about stamina and building up to that. And that is brutally why bands like us practice so much. I mean, I don't know, other bands in the championship section probably got this piece out last week because they've already got that stamina. With a band like Aid Edge, it's one of the key things that you've got to build to learn to produce that big, fat, solid brass sound to fill that hole. <laughs> I 
physically, uh, obviously the bigger instruments, their problems are that there's a massive amount of breathing. It's a very physically demanding thing, playing the tuba, breathing. On the higher instruments, the physical aspects are not so much the breathing, but the, just the muscles in the face. Because the, all these muscles are very small and, uh, you know, quite easily manipulated, easily built up. But when all said they are quite delicate and it doesn't take that long for them to run out. The cornet players, they'll be finding it very painful, very tiring. And the big guys at the back, very physically demanding, you know, coming off stage feeling lightheaded, you know, nearly passing out. And then the guys in the middle, a bit of everything. <laughs> we have to work really hard to play the pieces to the standard that other championship section bands do. And to me, there's two halves. There's the top half that are the true championship section bands that have always been there, the real top bands. Um, and then there's the others, the bottom half, that are never going to get to that standard because they haven't got that name and that history. They're never going to attract the calibre of players that they need. Um, and wearing that, wearing that. So there'll be two competitions going on tomorrow. There'll be the competition to get down to the Albert Hall. And there'll be another competition, like Haid Edge and, and some other bands. And we'll be all vying for, uh, you know, not being bottom up too far down the bottom of the pack. One and two and... <laughs> Rubbish, come on. One and two and. Well, somebody's mispitching the D flat, and it's somebody down here. He's a very motivated person, um, and he equally expects everybody around him to be as motivated as he is. Let's do it. Two before K. Da 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 He's sort of stuck between One, sort of the new school conductor and an old school conductor where he's got new ideas, likes new music, etc, etc, but yet his, um, his ideals and, and views are very old-fashioned in some ways. One and two and... This is back bedroom stuff, isn't it? Can you please... I mean, however many times it takes, whether it's 10, 20, 2 million, 5,000, just do it so it's good every time. That's not, we're not going to win unless we put that effort in. For Simon, most rehearsals require a carrot or a stick. I think it's just stick. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? You know, I, I'm always, you know, we'll get to the AGM and people say, you know, you're shouting at us a lot, you know, you need to stop shouting so much. But there are a lot of people, if I don't shout, they just wouldn't do anything. And they'd just turn up and play it, and if it were crap, they wouldn't be bothered. <laughs> They know that I don't shout unnecessarily. I mean, I do shout a lot, and I probably shout too much. But they all know that it's not personal. Nicely! When I'm growling at people, it's just, you know, get it right next time. Whenever you take on any kind of hobby or anything, you, you've always got to set yourself a goal. And I think for any bandsman, uh, and bearing in mind the best bands in the world, and that's a fact come out of Yorkshire, to make it to the stage in the championship section where you're playing against those bands on that stage on that day at St George's Hall is a major goal achieved. That's the main goal achieved, I would have thought. I mean, there's lots of other competitions that it might well lead us on to, so let's see how it goes. I mean, you can only do your best, and I suppose on paper we should come last, but we'll see. We'll see. Aid Edge have been here before, nervous nights before important competitions, clawing their way up through the lower sections, holding their nerve and doing their best. If you're being realistic, um, I don't expect, uh, I wouldn't expect for a minute that we could beat some of the really big bands. 
All we can do is is just do the best we can. That's all you can do. Um, you might as well ask a, a lad in a local football team, you know, what would it be like to play against Arsenal? And he'd, he'd bite your hand off, you know. And that's, that's just more or less the same for us. You know, non-league teams sometimes beat big football teams in the FA Cup. There's always that possibility. I'm not holding my breath, but it's, it's always that possibility. I've been at the band nearly six years and uh, I've done five area contests. The first one was a real struggle because we were still trying to build a band and we came 11th. Then we came second and then we came first. And uh, we played at the national finals and the first time we ever went to the national finals we came fifth. And uh, most people in the band, that was it. That was the achievements of Aid Edge Band and you know, well, that's great. You know, we just step back into our routine and plod along. But we moved on and then we, you know, we got Yorkshire champions and national champions. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of belief in the band then. And we were enjoying doing well and winning. That was super. Because then we had to go up into section one. And it was just like this. But we didn't want to come last. But um, we didn't want to come last, we came second. And that was. That was fantastic. Brilliant. I just want us to do. do well. You know, I don't want us to be a band that go up into the top section and, and then just have to plumb it back down again. Proudest punch, I think. That's what it's been. That's what 22 years of banding's been waiting for. And uh, it's always quite emotional. But what you can't bottle is when you get on that stage and Simon lifts his baton up. That moment, before you start, before the first note's played, that's where it is. That's the that's crunch time. And it's time to put all those months into put into into practice. Then we we'll go for it. Let's enjoy it.